Okay, in this video we're going to look at a couple of properties of vector functions and their derivatives. And so there are a bunch of properties here including like a sum rule and a product rule with the scalar function and other things like that which are quite simple. So I'll let you look in your textbook for those. I want to look at the ones that are new to the case of vector function and that is if we take the dot product of two vector functions and then take their derivative or the cross product and then take their derivative. And notice what we'll end up with is is a sort of product rule for each. So notice that if you take the derivative of u dot v, that is u prime dot v plus u dot v prime. Good, so it looks like the product rule. And then if you take the derivative of u cross v, you'll get u prime cross v plus u cross v prime. So again, it's like the product rule. So now I want to prove these. So let's look at the first one. So since the dot product is not too hard to do with an arbitrary number of dimensions, let's say u is given by u1 up to un. So all of those are functions of t. And then let's also say that v is given by v1 up to vn. Good. So you could simplify that down to something in two dimensions or something to three in three dimensions to get your hands on it, but it's not so much harder to do it like this. Now the next thing I want to notice is if you take u dot v, that's going to be equal to the sum i equals 1 to n of ui times vi. Good, so that's the definition of the dot product. But now notice if we take the derivative with respect to t of u dot v, that's going to be this sum, i equals 1 to n, of the derivative with respect to t of ui times vi. Notice those guys are scalar functions though, so we can use the normal product rule with those scalar functions. And that's going to give us this sum, i equals 1 to n of ui prime vi plus ui vi prime. Great. But now we can separate this out into two sums. So we have the sum i equals 1 to n of ui prime vi plus the sum i equals 1 to n of ui vi prime. But those are easily recognizable as dot products. And the first one is the dot product u prime dot v and the second one is the dot product u dot v prime. Good, so we've established this first identity. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll do the cross product. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is the cross product. So now the cross product is only well defined in exactly three dimensions. So there is another notion of a cross product in seven dimensions, but it's not defined as nicely. And there's actually a notion of a cross product in um, infinitely many directions, or, or in, and there's actually a notion of a cross product in an arbitrary number of dimensions, but that's also a little more complicated. So we'll say u is u1, u2, u3, and v is v1, v2, v3. Good, so those are the component functions for u and v. And our goal is to take this derivative of u cross v. So let's recall that we can take the cross product as the determinant of the following matrix. So we have the unit basis vectors i, j, k up top, u1, u2, u3 on the second row, v1, v2, v3 on the third row. Good. And then that's going to give us a vector valued function whose first component is given by taking the two by two determinant of that cofactor. So notice that's going to be u2 v3 minus u3 v2. And then the second component we get from crossing out the second column and the first row and then giving it a minus sign. So that's going to give us u3 v1 minus uh, u1 v3 Great. And then finally, the third component we get from crossing out the last column and the first row. So that's going to give us u1 v2 minus u2 v1. Great.
So now the next thing we want to do, oh yeah, we need a derivative of this. Great. So now we can use the product rule on all of these terms. So that's going to give us the following. So we'll have uh, u2 prime v3 plus u2 v3 prime minus u3 prime v2 minus u3 v2 prime and so on and so forth. So I'll do that really quick. Okay, so now we've got our derivative taken. Notice we've got our first component here, second component here, and our third component down here on the next line because I ran out of room. And the next thing we want to do is break this apart into pieces. So I'll break this and this apart into one of the vectors, this and this apart into the other vector, and so on and so forth. So all of the yellow underlines are going to go in the first vector, and all of the orange underlines are going to go in the second vector. Okay, good. So for instance, the first vector is going to be u2 prime v3 minus u3 prime v2, comma, u3 prime v1 minus u1 prime v3, and then finally, u1 prime v2 plus, sorry, minus u2 prime v1. So that's the first vector. But now notice, it's pretty, pretty easy to see that this first vector is exactly equal to u prime cross v. Good. And then I'll maybe underline all of these in yellow to remind ourselves where those came from. And the next thing we want to do is look at all of the orange vectors. So I'll just do that real quick. Okay, so now I've written all the uh, orange underlined vectors. So I'll note that by putting a little orange underline here. And now we have terms like u2 v3 pi prime minus u3 v2 prime and so on and so forth. And it's not too hard to see that this is u cross v prime. Good. So that establishes this second identity. Okay, great. So I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at some consequences of these two identities that might be a little unexpected. Okay, so the first observation that builds off of these two identities that we have here involving the derivative of the dot product and the derivative of the cross product is the following. So if the magnitude of a vector valued function is a constant, so I'm not saying the vector valued function is a constant, but its magnitude is a constant, and that's for all t, then uh, the derivative of that vector valued function is always perpendicular to the vector valued function. So let's see how this goes. So let's recall that uh, we want to show that r prime of t dot r of t equals zero. So that is equivalent to these guys being perpendicular. And let's see how we can get that. So notice the dot product is commutative. So u prime dot v is the same thing as v dot u prime, which allows us to write r prime dot r as r dot r prime if we need to. Um, and the next thing that we know is that this is a constant, so this magnitude is a constant. So the fact that that, that magnitude is a... Okay, so now we can rewrite the magnitude as a dot product. So we'll take r, the magnitude, equals c, and that's the same thing as r dot r equals c squared, using the fact that the magnitude of a vector is the square root of the dot product with itself. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. We can take the derivative of both sides of this equation. Notice that's going to give us r prime dot r uh, plus r dot r prime equals the derivative of our constant squared, which is just zero. Great. But now notice that this left-hand side adds up to 2 r prime dot r because the dot product is commutative. But now we can just divide by 2 and we have exactly what we need. And that tells us that the tangent vector of this vector valued function is perpendicular to the curve itself. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and we'll look at one more observation that's built off of this. 
Okay, so the next observation we're gonna look at has to do with the cross product. So we wanna show that the derivative of r cross r prime equals r cross r double prime. So this is a straightforward calculation. So we'll take the derivative of r cross r prime and we're gonna use this property that we just got done proving. So that's going to give us r prime cross r prime, taking the derivative of the first one, plus r cross r double prime. So notice we've already achieved our goal out here. We have r cross r double prime, but we've got this extra term. But this extra term is a vector cross itself. But if you recall from previous, a vector cross itself is always zero. And so that gives us the identity immediately. Okay, good. So that's the end of this video.